From the keyboard to the boardroom, this is the business of esports. Keyboard to the boardroom. This is the Business of Esports podcast. I am Paul Dewalibi. I'm joined today by my friend and co-host, Jimmy the Judge Barada. For those of you who are new here, welcome to the official podcast of esports. What we do is we cover the most pressing gaming and esports topics and news of the week, but we look at all of it through a business and C-suite lens. We dissect, we analyze the business implications of everything happening in this industry. For our regular listeners, thank you guys for tuning in every week. Thank you for all the love. The support. Thank you for leaving those five star ratings and reviews. If you haven't yet, do me a couple of favors. Go subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you get notified when those new episodes come out um, and leave a review. So if you're listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Play or wherever you get this, um, make sure you leave that review. It helps others to find the podcast. Jimmy, how you doing this week? Having a great week, Paul. How's it going, listeners? Welcome back to another another great episode. Happy to happy to be here. You know, my tan is fading, Jimmy. I'm, I'm starting to become somewhat self-conscious of this. This is, this is, a, this is bad news. And you well, having golf clubs in the background <laughs> is not exactly helping. This is not... <laughs> well, if you take a closer look at the clubs, half of those are actually lightsaber hilts, for, what that, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. <laughs> very, very serious golfing happening. <laughs> but we can, always, we can always spend a day on the course, I think. Maybe even do a recording from the clubhouse. That would be uh, as fun as recording at PAX or DreamHack or, or any of the other amazing venues that we're planning on hitting up. You know, a friend of mine used to do this thing called uh, Geeks on a Plane and where he'd get a bunch of startup founders and they'd all get on a plane and go to some city that was mostly fun, but also like to visit the startup ecosystem in that city. And I feel like we need to do something similar in gaming, like, like gamers on the golf course, right? Like I like the alliteration, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What's, There's something there. like. It's kind of like Jerry Seinfeld's comedians uh, in yeah. the car getting coffee, right? <laughs> so geeks on a plane, snakes on a plane. I get that. But yeah, the alliteration is, is really, I don't know, a lot of G activities. I'd probably have to put, we, yeah, we'd have to put well, our golf's fine by it. me. Why did uh, I? Well, well, okay. Well, well, then it's a winner. So you, hear, you, you heard it here first, you know, get, get ready. I heard it New here content. first. And then it's going to, I need to get the tan back. I need to get back to Florida, I think. And, and speaking of new content, by the way, you know, because uh, I have so many meetings, so many calls with great people, and they always are asking what's going on with William, the professor. You know, we, we love him. We want to hear more of him. Uh, I, don't let me take that, that, that wind out of your sails, Paul, if you want to announce that. No, show. go ahead. And no, please. So, so Office Hours with the Professor is one of our new programs. It stars William the Professor Collis. Uh, it's the same insight and analysis that you've heard from him on our Business of Esports programming, but in a more snackable form and in a more in-depth coverage of specific events. So instead of a little bit of William here and there across a whole myriad of issues, it it's truly is informative. It's great. Uh, if you get a chance, watch it because a uh, big shout out to our editor, Chris, on that one, who I think just made it look amazing. Uh, but, but the audio as well will be on our Business of Esports feed. And so for William fans, you'll be happy to hear that, we, uh, that we're doing some cool things around that brand. Yeah, even more reason to subscribe to the Business of Esports. Like if you're already getting Business of Esports content, you're going to get the Office Hours episodes uh, for free, right? Uh, just more, more content every week. Um, and, and the beauty of those episodes, I think you, you hit the nail on the head with it, Jimmy, is, you know, William gets to do a deep dive on, on, on an issue. And, and, you know, there's no one smarter in the esports space than William is. And so like when he does a deep dive on something, I think it's really really quite interesting, quite captivating. Um, and there's a lot to learn, which is why we called it office hours with the professor, right? It's like going, like you were in back in college, you're going to your professor's office hours because you want to get that one-on-one -on -one and that in-depth kind of insight that only you'd get in office hours and not in sort of the general classroom. So I hope everyone enjoys it. Um, you know, William's done a great job. There's two episodes out already that you guys can check out. 
and um, it should be fun. The, you expect Office Hours episodes every single week. Um, Jimmy, the other thing I, I just want to mention before I introduce our guest this week, because we do have an amazing guest this week. Um, last week, guys, there's, there was, we had two podcast episodes that came out. That won't necessarily be a regular occurrence, but sometimes we just, you know, we're in fact, uh, we have, you know, six months of guests booked uh, in advance. And so every so often it happens where you might get a couple of extra episodes or an extra episode on a given week. We hope you guys appreciate and enjoy that. Uh, but make sure to still come to our Wednesday night live streams. It's Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's a bigger cast. It's me and Jimmy and Jeff the Juice and Lindsay the Boss. And uh, we tackle all the news of the week that we don't cover on the podcast necessarily. And we do it live so you get to show up and ask questions and get in our faces. It's Wednesday. Wednesdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's so much fun. Highly, highly recommend you guys checking it out. Um, Jimmy, I don't want to waste any more time. We have an an absolutely amazing guest this week. Um, On the podcast this week, we have Eric Lay, who's the CEO of Alventis, and he's going to tell us about this. Um, Eric, welcome to the Business of Esports podcast. Yeah, glad to be here. Um, Eric, for our viewers who maybe don't know much about you or about Alventis, would love a bit of your background, like how you got into gaming, why you did, uh, what you guys are focused on at Alventis. Like what, what do you spend your time working on there? What are you guys doing? Would love a bit of the story. Yeah, I guess we can start off with like my early days of gaming. So I've been uh, a gamer for basically my whole life. Grew up playing video games. It started off as a way for me to connect with friends. They got me into it. Um, and then eventually I got really hooked into it. I had a lot of like issues I was dealing with at home, uh, anxiety, some like mental health issues and um, started spiraling into some like unhealthy uh, places and video games ended up being that safe space for me. It was a place where I could feel like you know, I have friends here, the work I put in the video game, I can see the progress where in life I felt like I was trying hard to, you know, make and make meaning in my own life and I can see any progress. So you know, I just dove deeper and deeper into the video game. Uh, ecosystem and you know that might sound good at first you know you're using video games to you know find some meaning in life but uh i started using it as sort of like as an unhealthy escape mechanism i started you know uh, avoiding a lot of the in real life issues i had um got to a point where i ran away from home and you know i I would stay overnight at internet cafes and i was like playing non-stop um at that time i was really addicted to league of legends i was this hard stuck gold player and I had this dream where it's like, you know, I hate school. I hate my parents. I hate life. Like I'm going to be this competitive video game player back in the early days of season two, three league of legends. I saw these big, you know, Twitch streamers starting to pop out like, you know, double lift and stuff, uh, the, uh, the odd one and stuff like that. I was like, you know, maybe I could be like that. Um, now at the time I wasn't very good at video games, but now I finally found something I was passionate about. So I started playing more and more video games. Uh, not to my, my parents obviously were not very happy with that. They wanted me to go do well in school. Um, but I just fell in love with the game. And as I dove deeper and deeper, I realized like, damn, like I'm not even that good. I'm like spending like, you know, uh, eight hours a day playing video games, skipping classes and not doing any homework. And I'm still hard stuck gold. Like, why is this the <laughs> case? So, um, that's where I started, you know, diving deep into the world of sports psychology and mental performance. I started studying the most successful athletes, entrepreneurs, trying to reverse engineer their mindset. Like, why are they the best at what they do? What am I doing Crazy. wrong? I'm spending so much time playing video games, yet I can't find a way to turn it into something meaningful. And that's where, you know, I started reading all these books and I started, you know, looking for mentors and advice. And I started practicing everything I was learning into my video game career, if you can call it that. So. Um, as I started applying a lot of these mental performance principles, as I started learning about growth mindset, started learning how to practice like mental resilience, strengthen my work ethic and get my sleep schedule figured out. I started like meditating daily. I started like writing my journal, started like bot reviewing my games rather than just playing to play and just going in that infinite loss streak or that infinite 50% win rate that everyone dreads. So um, as I dove deeper into there, I started uh, seeing some success. Um, I got to a point where eventually I was like top 50 ranked in uh, top 50 ranked in North America for League of Legends, been a challenger player for over five years. Now I never ended up going professional. I like scrim with some pro teams and stuff like that. So, you know, even though I had this big dream of trying to go pro, I still was able to, you know, find success in other ways. And I started to realize that I had this knack for coaching people. Um, 
I started taking on some different side gigs. I had like background with traditional sports as well. Cause I was a competitive athlete in high school. So it was natural that as I would, you know, I did some coaching with like running and like soccer. I started applying those principles to the way I started coaching league and applying all of the sports psychology principles I was learning into coaching league. And then I started having a lot of success as a freelance coach. Um, fast forward a few years, I got to a point where I was um, arguably like probably like the number one ranked coach in North America and Europe in terms of like how many bookings and how much money I was making. Got to a point where I was making well over, you know, five figures a month USD, um, which might not seem like crazy amount in like the world of business or even the world of esports right now. But at that time, um, I knew like the market, most people were make like struggling to even make a few thousand dollars a month coaching um, because the supply and demand just wasn't there. Um, and the way I was able to get there was I started learning a lot about like business. And I started learning about how to like scale out my coaching business. And from that, I started turning that success as like a freelance esports coach to building Alventus. Now that's sort of like, uh, bring things full circle in the, I had a few years, so I tried a few other like business projects. Some of them worked better, uh, worked out better than others, but I found myself coming back to Alventus because I knew I really wanted to build a business that can really help other people and do something that I was really passionate about. And that's how I started like Alventus. Yeah. Eric, I love the story. And, uh, you know, I have, I have some obvious questions that may, aren't, let me get the non-business questions yeah. out of the way that I'm just, to a total pure curiosity. First of all, why Elventus? Like, why the name? Yeah. So, <laughs> so the way I got it was, uh, I, I was, I was like thinking about this for a few few months. Like, I was trying to figure out a name for the company, <laughs> and I, I found I stumbled upon the Roman god of success. I think it's like Bon Eventus. Um, so, and then I sort of took E L E L my initials, and I just combined. El Ventus and it sort of just flowed nicely. I was like, ah, it sounds nice. It sounds professional because, um, <laughs> in like the gaming space, um, there's like a lot of like black market businesses and the coaching and the, it gets tied with boost boosting. And I want to make sure that the branding sounded very professional, more like a consulting agency, more like something that can like professional players, like academies, colleges, parents would be interested in supporting. I didn't want to go down a stereotypical, like dragon coaching, or, you know, like this, those yeah. things that you see with like, the old school gaming audience that um, the, 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 the stereotypical gaming audience that, you know, parents or institutions might not be as supportive of. And, and then the second fun question I have before I, I, I do have business questions. Why, why did you decide to not go pro? Like why get so close to that goal and then not, you know, not push that last, that last yeah. mile. No, I get this question all the time. Um, I think, I, I think I got more mature. Uh, and what that means is like people don't understand how insanely hard it is to become a professional gamer. I was playing 16 hours a day before. Um, and now when I was operating at my peak performance, I was probably practicing around eight, um, because I learned more about like balancing it, like sleep and all of that. But, um, it's insanely hard. And there are people who get to challenger without even needing to do any training that I did. Like the amount I trained, like I, I can tell you, I worked harder than anyone like out there at that time. Like no one was writing, you know, hours, spending like three, four five hours a day watching VODs and writing essays of notes and reviewing it again and again. Like I was grinding my <laughs> ass off just to get to like challenger where I see other people, they're like 15 years old and they're like top 50 ranked. And all they do is play solo key. And that was just crazy <laughs> to me. And I think that was like a big wake up call. I'm like, yeah, Eric, you want to go pro? Like, yes, you've accomplished a lot, but you have to work like 10 times as hard. Why not do something where you can put that same effort and have way more success. And I mean, I was studying a lot of entrepreneurs and I was like, you know, what if I put that same effort into business? Like maybe I could, you know, build something much bigger and have something that's way more impactful or even coaching uh, before I got more exposed into business. I was like, man, I didn't have to put the same amount of effort I was putting into the, um, my professional career into coaching. And all of a sudden I'm like one of the best in the world at this. And I'm like, this is probably the better career path. So I tried like, you know, five different side hustles, like businesses and stuff. And, um, I was doing everything at the same time while balancing a part-time job because my parents weren't very supportive of my video game career. So, um, I was trying Been everything, there. trying to no, find a way to make it work. Um, and vi uh, video game coaching ended up being the one thing that was actually like really successful. So for me, it's like, I diversified my portfolio of skills and it was very clear which one was working the most. And that's where I just invested more into it. 
it's a tremendous amount of self-awareness, which I congratulate you for. I think, I think there's like, I know we have lots of listeners who could learn for just from that little tidbit there. Uh, you know, I know a lot of gamers who, who put in 16 hours a day and, and don't understand that if they just put that into a business or something, uh, the amount of success or the amount they could change their lives is, is pretty dramatic. Um, let's pivot to the business here a little bit in terms of Elventus. You know, we've had, we've talked to other, call it coaching platforms. You know, we hear a lot about them. There are, you know, I, I don't know the exact number. There's probably a few dozen sort of at least good options out there or, or decent businesses out there around coaching. Um, I, you know, when I look on Elventus's website, I notice you guys position yourselves quite differently, right? Like uh, coaching sort of comes second. There's a lot of the word like consulting, which you mentioned. Um, how, how do you guys sort of position yourself in the coaching space relative to the others? And, and like what sets Elventus apart in your mind? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing for me, it comes down to quality. I, when I think about how you build a scalable coaching business in the end, I see there's a lot of like tech founders building like coach coaching companies. I see a lot of people with different backgrounds, maybe some like competitive background, but in the end, I think the, the greatest companies are always going to be the companies that have the best product who can solve this, the biggest problems for the customers who can deliver the best solution towards the, the, the gamers needs. And what I find for us, like, I, I've been doing this coaching stuff professionally for over seven years. I've dedicated thousands of hours into like learning about what it takes to be a successful coach. And it, it really shows in the way we build out our coaching platform and our product and our service. Um, and I'd say the real difference is like, we focus on quality. Um, yes, we can try and build a marketplace and have like thousands of coaches, but really like that's really hard to scale in my opinion. The way I want to focus it on is like, how do we build a service that is so good at um, targeting the, so, so I want to build a service that's really focused on like, how can we solve the big problems of the gamers and then scale it out through technology rather than focusing on let's build like a scalable technology and figure out some like coaching element and attach coaching into it. I want to start off with what are the biggest pain points of our customers, build a coaching solution for that, and then use technology to scale that out. And who is your target customer in your mind? Like, what does that person look like? Is it, is it the parents of a young kid and the, the you know, they, they want to, they hope that their kid's going to get a scholarship to an esports program. Is it, is it the kid who, uh, you know, has ambition to be pro and, and you guys want to produce champions? Like, what, what is the, the profile of your target or ideal customer? Yeah. So <laughs> it's funny to ask this question now, cause we've, we've done a few different like iterations. I think when I started off, I really focused on the premium customers. Um, I had clients who were paying over $500 a month, some paying thousands of dollars a month for coaching and they would be with us for six months, a full year plus. Right. And, and we start off with like the premium people, people are trying to go pro collegiate programs, stuff like that. And because we have like a team of professionals who've worked in the LCS, we have like actual registered sports psychologists, mental performance coaches who have years of coaching experience and have spent years building out a training exercise and routines. Like we were able to grab a hold of the more premium audience. But then as I started building it more, I realized that like there's a cap in terms of like how much opportunity there is in the premium side. What I'm more excited about right now is like how do we build a service that can reach millions of gamers across the world? And with that, um, that's been our main focus now. And the way we're planning to do that is really through our new like training partner matching system. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take all of the foundations of what made our premium coaching service really amazing and find a way to teach our students how to teach themselves. Um, and by being a part of our, our platform and our subscription service, they're going to be dripped training exercises and drills uh, every single week. And then they're going to have a training partner where we're going to match them with you know, different people each week. And they're going to use the training exercises and the curriculum, the IP that we've built over the past few years to be able to work with them each week. And we have like different seminars. We've got like over 50 like recorded lessons. So um, our, our version of scalability is more so focused on like how do we build something that can, you know, help, you know, hundreds or thousands of people at once rather than we're going to have hundreds of thousands of coaches trying to deliver because we realize like trying to manage that uh, supply chain, it's very hard to manage. Yeah. I want to follow that thread just a little bit, Eric, and, and it's so impressive. And, you know, I'm sure you have this or, or, or 
Well, let me just get into it. You know, with these students and and that you're teaching and the pain points, like you said, you know, what what do they want to learn? What what are they coming back for? Uh, what are you learning in with regards to specifically addressing those pain points as you're applying it now to this new business model and and, and your uh, shift towards growth and optimization? And in that same regard, what's the initial feedback you're getting from the students on how you've been able to adapt your business to to your understanding of what that pain point was, you know, have you been initially successful in, in this shift and in readdressing that issue? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so do you mind just going back to the first question and then I'll, I'll get to the second one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the initial question was, you know, uh, what were those initial pain points, I suppose, of your students, of the people coming through your program Uh, and then we'll go to the second half. Yeah. So what, what I noticed was, um, so when I was like a freelance coach, I started off by just doing VOD reviews. I started just like watching their gameplay, helping them improve there. As I started getting more experienced coaching, I realized that the reason why players aren't improving in the game, oftentimes it's not because of the lack of game knowledge. In fact, these days you can go on YouTube, you could search guides, there's infinite free resources online. You don't need to hire a coach to tell you what you're doing wrong. If you weren't so lazy yourself, maybe you could just research and just compare your gameplay to a professional player and just, you know, and you'll be able to like see some of the differences in your gameplay to theirs because that's what I did. But the reason why people aren't successful, it's not because of the lack of knowledge. It's their inability to execute on what they know they need to do. You know that you know, you're getting caught out in the same position and you tell yourself, I'm not going to get caught out in this position anymore. But for some reason, the gamer still makes that same mistake tomorrow and the day after, even though they know they're making that mistake and they beat themselves up. Or it's like, why am I doing this? And the answer is really simple. You've seen this in education. You've seen this in professional sports. It really comes down to discipline and repetition. If you want to achieve mastery, if you want to be the best at anything, there's only two shortcuts to success. One, you learn how to, one, you get great genetics and you're born with a great, you know, great skill set. And, you know, you learn very quickly. You're going to get to the top. You're going to get to challenger, uh, like very quickly because you're just, you know, born very talented. Or the other answer, which is the answer I learned for myself was, you have to learn how to work smarter and work harder than everyone else. And the only answer is through discipline and repetition. You do the same micro actions again and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, to the point where you can't forget it. And then we focus on the next thing. But when I see like most coaches, what they do is they just focus on like, what are you doing? They'll, they'll watch like what you're doing. Right. And they'll give you some tips of like, Oh, you should do this differently. And you know, when I watch someone who's playing league or any other video game, like I could probably point out like, hundreds of different mistakes they're making in just the first five minutes. But what are you going to do with that information? You can't actually coach yourself to improve on a hundred things at once. Your brain can't handle that. So what we try and do with Elventus is we simplify that. And we're like, this week, we're going to give you a training exercise and you're going to work on this for one week straight, hundreds of times in a row to the point where you can't forget it. And that's why like, I really started this company because when I went on that journey myself, when I started learning the power of repetition, of like focus, discipline, I, it really changed my life. That's how I got out of like my anxiety, my depression. So when I think about the people we're trying to solve, uh, trying to build a service for, it's really to, there's, there's multiple people. Like it's for the gamer who wants to get really good at video games. It's also for the parents. It's also for the institutions because parents are spending like hundreds of dollars on extracurricular programs for their kids, but not a single dollar of that is being spent towards video games because there's still this negative stigma around video games being like, ah, video games, it's bad. It's unhealthy. It's toxic. And that's why I really started this company because I was like, I want to show to my parents and the next generation of gamers that, you know, video games can develop real life skills because I've seen the dark side of gaming. I've seen myself spiral deeper and deeper into depression because video games was that unhealthy escape mechanism. But when I finally found a big goal I could work towards, when I had that dream of trying to go pro, um, I was able to start working on those skills. And that's what we're really teaching them with their training exercises, with their mental performance coaches, um, and even just the accountability systems with like matching with a training partner, just having a friend uh, who's in that community, who's also learning the power of mental resilience, who, who understands the power of growth mindset and how that applies to your learning. Being in that community is really going to help accelerate the growth of our players. And our goal with Alventus is really to take that to scale. Um, Eric, I, have some, I want to dig on the product side a bit. Because you mentioned, you know, products super important to you guys having the best products important. And, you know, when you're dealing with a premium product like yours is uh, how are you how are you delivering this to customers in the sense that, like, is is it all very custom tailored? Right. Someone comes in and a program is built for them. 
is some of it like curriculum that you've built already that gets delivered, you know, multiple times to different clients and you reuse. And, and then I'm also curious about like the mix, because I think some one of the things, a couple of the things you mentioned are quite unique to you guys, like the mix of training, call it on the PC versus like outside of or off the PC, right? Like what that mix looks like to the average customer. Okay, so so I guess like starting off with like um, how we deliver to our premium services, like I mentioned before, we, we've made a slight pivot from that. We're still working with our premium customers. So um, but in terms of that, um, we've we've got an insane amount of curriculum like we've like over the years, I've got pages and pages and pages of docs and templates of how we do coaching. We even launched like a coaching training program to train our coaches. We had a coach go through six months of training just to allow them to work with Alventus because we put six months of like homework every day, like an hour of training before we were able to hire him full time because that's how insanely, uh, like how much like, uh, how much like how serious we are about like the quality of our product. But in terms of like how we actually deliver it, like we've got a lot of curriculum and then basically we work with a client. It's, we do a discovery call. We understand what their biggest pain points are. Um, and then we, we figure out, okay, this seems to be the biggest issue. We'll work on that until you get really good at that and we'll structure out you know a full month of training based off of that and then we'll see how that evolves also we get all of our premium clients to synchronize their google calendar with their coaching staff um we, we give them access to a team of coaches a mental performance coach a head coach and then like an assistant coach and basically we will help you manage your sleep schedule so we've had players like who are trying to push pro but we've also had people who are like busy entrepreneurs and they work like insane hours and we're like okay we want to make video games very efficient so we're going to manage your work schedule with you we're going to try and find pockets and time and we're going to give you very intentional training you have two hours here how do we make the most of that and then also balancing burnout to understand like we also don't want to push you too hard over the edge how do we you know, structure that calendar and that's that's just been a lot of trial and error and um and everything really comes down to um the power of the training exercises and how do we incentivize them to do the training exercises so, you know, the way our coaches are trained, like there's a lot of psychology that goes into it. Like how do we like communicate information in a way that will get them excited? You know, some people do very well where they need that extra push from a, uh, some people are very like competitive and they want a guy who's going to yell at them be like, no, you got this man. You know, <laughs> you just got to push hard. Like, uh, like don't be lazy. And then other people, they just need more confidence boost. Right. So because our coaches go through so much training to understand that, you know, we're able to deliver really high quality services um, for our premium clients. Um, yeah. It, it sounds like there's a lot of, uh, philosophy, I suppose, underlying, you know, the program that you're building, right. In terms of understanding what's going to work fundamentally. I'm curious how much of this is transferable to different game titles. Cause there's a heavy focus for you, right. On league, but a lot of these, like you said, confidence building and just being a better coach, uh, obviously that that's going to work in any sense in life in general, not just in gaming. So, uh, you know, as you build out this curriculum and as you build out your, your protocols, I suppose for in training, you know, internally for your product, you know, where are you focusing on taking this across, um, what, what titles, what games or, or, you know, in what capacity? Yeah. So I've been talking to like a few like potential partners to see like, what's the next vertical to expand to. Um, and, and I would say, because we're really big on trying to target like the parents and we're trying to target the institutions because we see that's where the real money is, is really coming from. So, um, the, the research I've seen is like rocket League's very big, um, for parents and institutions. We see smash, the smash community is pretty big as well. Fortnite's pretty big and Valorant is also really big specifically, not, not necessarily with the parents, but it's really big because we have the connections with Riot and League of Legends. So, um, that's like a very, and it's a very popular game. So those are like the top titles we're looking at and then COD just because of the size. But I mean, if I had to pick, um, two titles, I would say probably Valorant just because it's very close to our ecosystem and then probably Rocket League, um, just because of like how simple it is for like parents to grasp and understand. Yeah. It, Sorry, Jimmy, go ahead. Oh, I was going to just a oh, quick follow up on that, you know, and, and again, understanding that your product now is going to be applied to a different game. How does that also affect, I suppose, your marketing and your community, right? Uh, if you have a discord or your socials, cause you know, a lot of these fandoms are super loyal to that one game. So I'm curious how that affects uh, the, the community that you're growing as well, as you start to expand and incorporate new users, new clients, but that have, 
very conflicting interests or at least separate separate interests. Yeah. So right now, like we're all in on League of Legends because that's where my network and my experience is. Um, my philosophy for business. I mean, if I'm going to take the philosophies for coaching, it really comes down to focus. Um, it, it's my my individual success came from knowing what I'm good at, and I'm going to dominate that one industry. So my goal is like, how do we become number one, number two in League of Legends, or at least like get to a point where you know everyone knows like Alventus as the top like coaching platform for League of Legends, and from there we can pivot very quickly to games like Valorant, Rocket League, and you know with like venture capital money, like we'll be able to scale very quickly and implement those systems similar to how TSM they expand to Fortnite very quickly. They already built a brand in League of Legends. And because they've they built a track record of success, when they translated uh, that success to other titles, it was very natural for them or easy for them to recruit a team in Fortnite because they like the community already knew like these guys know what they're doing from a business standpoint. So you know I because we're still in the earlier stages of a startup, like I don't want to take on more than I can chew. I want to make sure we prove this business model get that fleshed out and then we're going to expand to the other titles um because i think there's there's a lot of similarities like like you mentioned before um these coaching principles it's really focused on a lot of mental performance like growth mindset mental resilience like work ethic it doesn't matter what you're trying to get at get good at these principles apply to everything and that's why we started this company because the goal is to help the player who wants to go pro and what they don't realize is 99 percent of players won't ever be pro or won't ever make it to GoPro. 99% of players won't ever become a big influencer. Yet everyone wants to become that big influencer, that big pro player. How do we equip these uh, students, these players, with the skills to be successful, no matter what they set their mind to in life? And that foundation in our training, in our in our learning curriculum, it will apply to no matter what esports title we transition into. Does the challenge then become... Eric, the hiring of good coaches that meet sort of your standards, is, is that, does that sort of become the, the, the biggest challenge to scale this business to, you know, a, a very large size that, uh, you know, are there enough great coaches out there that meet the kind of very high standards you guys have set? Or are you resigned to the fact that basically you may have to train every coach that comes through your door? We, we've got a great business model, so I'm not afraid about expand to other other um titles i think we can we can probably hire like the best coaches when we're ready um just because the margins of our products are really good because we have um like our premium services like we we make good money off of that and then our and then our scalable like services our subscription services that start at like 30 dollars a month and we we run like different promos for that like the margins are infinite like if we get a thousand clients like we're 99 98 percent margin rate right, on that because we're doing like one coach to a thousand people, right? So um, when you have margins like that compared to, you know, coaching marketplaces who take 10% cut, you know, it gives you room to bring in the best talent. And not only that, like our, the way our, our business is structured from a coaching training coaches standpoint, our beta, when we train our other coach, he paid for the training and the coaching because of the credibility that I have in the space and our team has in the space. He paid $9,000 for this, this certification, but you know what? It was worth it for him. Much better investment than most college degrees because he got a full-time job after that. So, I mean, with, with that training, like it's, it's a great model because we're actually profiting from recruiting. Like when we recruit a coach, we're profiting. And then they're, we know that they're the best person for the job because we're training them. We're teaching them in a way that's gonna, that's gonna be successful for our business because I've, I've tried hiring like some, big name coaches. Um, and I paid some decent money for like very reputable coaches. And I realized like the guy we trained in house, his client retention rate was much higher because of the quality of our training itself, because the big name coach was so used to his ways of coaching, like in the LCS, like we couldn't mold him into the coach we wanted to be. And the guy that we had go through our training program where we trained him for six months, like his client retention rate was like insanely high. And I'm so impressed and like, you know, really grateful that, you know, he, joined our beta program and that's really proving that business model. So, you know, we're excited to take that to other games eventually and do the next phase of the coaching training program. It's a great story and, and you love hearing, I think, uh, your ability to create opportunities and jobs for the coaches, as well as I think a, a useful skill set for your clientele. Uh, the third piece of that wheel, you know, and at least for me that I'm always thinking about business development because it's so much of what I do, how valuable is it to you? How important is it to you? And how great has it been for the start of your business? 
not only to be in League of Legends, but to have such a great line of communication with arguably, I think the best, the, the best in the business right now in Riot. You know, how important is that connection, that relationship, and how do you see yourself facilitating uh, future relationships like that with some of the other developers and publishers? Yeah, I think that stuff is really important. To be honest, like I don't have those connections at Riot yet, so we've been able to just bootstrap our way through this, um, just from like my my Terra knit circle and my network there. I mean, if we were to get like a partnership with Riot, I think that the growth of the company would just skyrocket like crazy. Um, just having the backup, the backing, the validity, but also the pipeline of customers. So I mean, um, that's going to be one of our big targets. I think right now we've been the past year or so we've been so invested into like building out the perfect product like delivering the most quality uh, service to our users. Like we haven't been so big on the biz dev side. We haven't been you know, getting these big partnerships, none of that PR, like haven't done any marketing. Everything's just very organic. So um, I'm excited to get moved to that phase where, you know, we can start growing and securing these big partnerships because I think if we get that big megaphone or that big like signal where it's like, Hey, this is Riot approved. Like, I think that would be insane. Um, yeah, and we and the way we structure the business, like we can handle an influx of tens of thousands of clients and still be able to deliver the same quality service. In fact, um, something I didn't fully mention, but like the quality of our service actually goes up based off of the number of clients in the program because we'll be able to match them with better training partners because we're going to be able to match our students with someone who's the exact same rank, wants to learn the exact same thing that week. And mm -hmm. wants to, you know, is in the same server, has the same availabilities. Right now, our, our matching system is very manual. So we're getting like, you know, grandmaster players with gold players. But I mean, they're, they're, they're happy doing it because like we've got a really great community um, and they're still learning that you can get. But imagine we can get this product to a point where you can have someone who's like your perfect match. Um, I think that's going to be really exciting for the scaling and the growth of the, of the product. And so, Eric, what is like, paint me a picture of the future. and. You, you can pick the timeline, I don't know, five years, 10 years, three years, whatever timeline you, you, you're looking ahead at. Is there a world, and I've asked this question before, is there a world where this kind of coaching is as ubiquitous, as common as people putting their kids with a math tutor, right? Like, will we reach this level of acceptance? Because, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but or if you if you disagree. So much of this to me is driven by the parents, right? The, the kinds yep. of this is decisions made by the parents to pay to get their kids coaching. There may be the odd one, you know, there's a minority that will do it themselves or pay for it themselves. But I, I feel like the huge opportunity is how do you get every parent thinking, you know, this is more important than getting my kid, my son or daughter, a math tutor. Right. Yep. And um, like. How far away are we from that in your mind? Like, what does that future look like? Do we get there? Is it, is it tomorrow? Is it three years? Is it 10 years? Yeah, it's hard to say. But I mean, if you're talking about getting to a point where uh, sending your kid to uh, video game camps or lessons is as popular as sending your kids to piano lessons or swimming lessons, stuff like that, um, I, I'd probably guess anywhere in the, in the five to 10 year mark. Um, I think there's still a ways away. Um, I think it's going to take startups like us. And, you know, I know there's a lot of other startups trying to, you know, tack into that, tackle into that space, but it's going to be, you're going to need some big partnerships and stuff. You're, you're going to need to get the credibility, um, have the right partners that parents trust. So I know on my end, like I can get the credibility from the gamers. We, we already have the buy-in parents love, I mean, kids, uh, gamers love this, right? So they're going to tell their parents, but how do we get parents to be like, this is something really cool. I think it starts with having a really strong mission, making sure your core values, making sure the product is actually delivering really strong value for your clients. And then once you, you have that, then you can bring in institutional partners, um, big corporations, Fortune 500 companies to put the seal of approval and be like, you know, this is a company that really pushes mental health, mental performance. Like, you know, we've, we've actually done a recent survey where right now 88% of our clients, they've said that through the program, they've seen a, a a development in their growth mindset. We've seen 86% of our clients saying like they've improved their mental resilience and 92% of their, of our clients say they've developed stronger work ethic through our program. And when we present these statistics to you know, larger uh, corporations and partners, eventually, I think that will hopefully, you know, snowball and balloon um, the goal of getting every single parent to send their kids to video game programs, because every kid is playing video games right now. Uh, the question is like, when will parents uh, want to support 
their their children's you know passion for for gaming and maybe you already answered it there but like what are those accelerants right like what are the things the levers that that you have the capability to to, to pull on and, and others in the industry that that may take that five to ten years down to you know two to three years like what are those accelerants is it bigger prize pools more university esports programs is it like what are the accelerants in your mind? I think what you guys are doing is, is a great accelerator. I think media, I think um, when you think about how uh, esports companies are successful, it's building a brand um, starts off by having uh, like, I think you can create a movement where if you can speak to uh, mass amounts of parents and corporations, and if you get them to believe and buy into the story, right now it's going to start to spread because they're going to be like, wow, my kid sent, join this program and then they're going to tell their friend or this corporation, wow, we partnered with Alventus and you know, they're doing some really amazing work for employees in terms of like improving their mental performance. And it's really fun. So um, I think as like, it, it really comes down to like, I'd say content, I think that's going to be one of our big goals in the next year is like, how do we really get that content out there? Not just to the gamers. Cause I think th- those, those, those channels are already proven. I mean, obviously you could do like influencer marketing, you could do, you know, you could do YouTube content, you do those like click, clickbait, you know, educational videos, right? That that's like, that strategy has been played out many times. People know how to target that. Um, the big question mark is how do you deliver content that um, the older demographic, right? The parents institutions are going to be, you know, really excited about. And I think that's going to come down to a lot of like news, newsletters, um, blog posts, uh, podcast content, conferences, uh, panels, right? So I think that's going to be a big part of the strategy in the next year. Very cool. I, I love that answer. I, I, obviously, I love that answer. Um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Jimmy, uh, this brings us to, you know, everyone's favorite new segment. Uh, Jimmy, I'd love if, uh, you know, you could take Eric through Judge Jimmy's cross-examination here. And for those of you who are new to the podcast, if you don't know if this is your very first time, Judge Jimmy's going to ask Eric a few rapid fire questions here. Uh, looking to dive a bit deeper into who uh, Eric is as a gamer, as a person, as a business person, all those good things. Uh, Honorable Judge Jimmy, take it away. Great. Yeah, a couple quick questions for you, Eric. Uh, First one, let's see. What is your favorite food or drink when gaming? Oh God. Like when I game, I, I lose track of it. I forget to eat and, and drink. I mean, I like water. I know that's a very boring answer, but, uh, like I drink a lot of water and I, I like that. Yeah. I, lo- I love your first answer that you forget cause you're so yeah. into yeah. it. Yeah. It's the performance coach answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that too. Uh, the, the Ronaldo answer too, if you guys remember when he yeah. put down the Coca-Cola bottle and said, you know, Awa. uh, great. I typically ask favorite video games, but we know that one. Let's yeah. actually take it old school. <laughs> what was your favorite video game growing up before you ever came across league? So your pre league days. Uh, I've got two. I think I really liked all the NBA titles. I, I played it on my PlayStation and stuff. Um, it got me, I, I was in love with the manager tools. I, I loved like trading. And so I think that was a good early, early exposure to business. And the other game would be Maple Story. I think hmm. I, I love economics. I love the, the marketplace. Uh, I was the guy who wasn't doing as many of the quests, but I would be buying and selling items. So I think that was a sneak peek towards my <laughs> love. Uh, for you were that guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, so funny. Yeah, That's music to my ears. Uh, that, by the way, that's an interesting, like, uh, the founder of Maple Story, for those who don't know, actually just passed away. So actually quite sad, uh, wow. but that is a great game. Yeah. Nice. Smooth transition. Uh, no, Sorry. Yeah, I hope you rest. I mean, gaming uh, news. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, we, definitely a sad, sad thing to hear. Let's yeah. pick it back up, Eric. Um, this is a fun one. Uh, what is your favorite Ninja Turtle? Oh no. Gosh. Um, Oh man, I, I, I didn't follow much of the Ninja Turtles, so I, I, I can't I can't give a good answer here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. There's a first time for everything, I suppose. Um my You need to give an alternate question there, Jimmy. Like like, like a, a Power different... Ranger or like I don't know. Like if if you didn't grow up on Ninja Turtles, you grew up on one of these things, right? I mean, oh, let's expand the question then. We're kind of diverging here, but Eric, what was like your favorite uh, TV series growing up and, and then the character within that? Gosh. Um, 
or are you one of those outdoors kids? <laughs> no, I, I just played a lot of sports to be honest. <laughs> like my, my parents didn't even have cable. Like they didn't let me watch TV. They were strict. They didn't let me play video games. So, uh, that's why I was so addicted to video games because they didn't let me. But yeah. Or watch TV. Yeah. And, and now this is a successful business in, in a, a massive industry and you did a complete yeah. 180, I think on the outdoor. Yeah. It's great. Um, all right. Last question here. Uh, where do you hope, uh, well, actually we asked that one already. Let me switch that up. What keeps you up at night? What's your biggest problem for your company today that, that you're kind of always thinking about, how do I solve this? Or, or I'm going to have to come across this eventually and I need a plan for it. I want to make all the people who believe in me, uh, proud. I think that I feel the weight of that on my shoulders every day, uh, leading a company. You know, I've had plenty of people who come in early. We're still, you know, we're still like bootstrap. Uh, I've invested my personal money into this and, uh, I'm not able to pay like competitive salaries. I wish I could. Right. Uh, but people are taking a chance on this business because they believe in the mission and they believe in the vision. And I think that motivates me every day to just work a bit harder to be like, okay, these people believe in me. They put their trust in me and, uh, I want to deliver for them. So that's what keeps me up. I love these answers. I mean, Eric, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show, such a pleasure getting to know you over the past few months and meeting you late last year. And, and back to you, Paul, Eric, thanks so much for, for joining us today. I think that's the best answer yet to that question. Honestly, um, yeah. Eric, uh, again, thank you for being on the show, uh, for, uh, if you want to be followed or found or, uh, you know, where can people go find out more about you or what you're doing or Elventus? Like where can people follow or find you? Yeah. Just connect with me on LinkedIn. I think that's probably the best place for business. So, uh, Eric Lay, uh, Elventus. So yeah, search me up on LinkedIn. I set pretty much everyone. So, um, present me with some unique opportunities. I love, you know, chatting esports business. And, um, obviously I, I mentioned a bit about partnerships. I think that's going to be a big goal for us in this new year. So, I'm happy to explore what opportunities are out there. I love that. I love what you guys are are doing. Um, and uh, just having met you now and, you know, had these conversations, I, I have no doubt this is going to be a massive success. So uh, congratulations on all the success so far and uh, excited to see where Alventus goes. Um, for our listeners, guys, uh, just a couple of reminders, a couple of housekeeping things. Make sure to follow Business of Esports everywhere. Everywhere you get our content, whether it's YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, uh, even Reddit, you name it, everywhere you can find Business of Esports, just search for it, uh, either Business of Esports or Biz Esports. And also don't forget our, our live stream Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Make sure you show up for that. Uh, again, you can find that everywhere you find our content. And let me know, let the professor know, let William Collis, myself, Jimmy know how you're liking the new show office hours with the professor. Uh, we're really proud of it and we hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, Jimmy, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you guys all for listening. And as always, we will see you next week.